my turn. Amen. Amen. I, I don't know if I want to follow that or not. <laughs> <laughs> so that was wonderful. Let's go ahead and do the repass and, and go on our merry way. Uh -huh. <laughs> not that easy. <laughs> <laughs> I give honor to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on this morning. I give honor to the pastor and the first lady in her absence. I give honor to everyone comes and comes and their wives and honor to just everyone in the building. It is just a pleasure and a privilege to be here today. I thank my auntie <laughs> for doing that wonderful, wonderful introduction. And I thank Sister Sierra for showing out, I mean, for singing that wonderful song. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> um, I just want to say that it is also an honor and a privilege to be asked to speak on today. Today we celebrate Women's Day here at Alligator Chapel Missionary Baptist Church. So when I was asked to speak on today, I was like, Lord, <laughs> what am I going to say to your people? Well, I figured before I try to talk to the people, I need to gain a better understanding of why we have Women's Day service. So after using Google, here's what I found out. That Women's Day celebrates the love and grace of Jesus Christ. It expresses the desire of women to serve and glorify the Lord. So, I said to myself, I said, self, what does that mean? <laughs> and of course, myself did not know the answer. So, I said, Lord, what is it that you want me to speak to your people about on this? So, I'm going to do my best to deliver this message as it was given to me. So, bear with me and pray for me. Okay? So, if you will, turn with me to your, in your Bibles to the book of Esther. Chapter 4, verse 14, and I ask all who can and will to please stand. And when you're there, say amen. If you need more time, say hold on a minute. Amen. Hold on. Hold on a minute. Amen. <laughs> chapter 4. four chapter 4, that's the Verse 14. Okay. All right. Sounds like everybody is there. Amen. And it reads, For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then, that, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed, and who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Mm. You may be seated. Thank you. Amen. All right, if you will, pray with me. Let us bow our heads. Lord, I just thank you for blessing me with the opportunity to speak to your people and to spread your holy word. I ask that I may decrease and you increase. I ask that you speak to me and through me, Lord. I ask that you touch and open the minds and hearts of everyone within the sound of my voice so that the eyes may see and the ears may hear, that your people may receive, understand, and apply the message you have given me the honor of delivering on this day. Lord, I pray the service will go according to your will. I claim it now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, if I had to give a title to my message today, it would be, Woman, Know Thy Place. Mm. Let, me, let me look around the room real quick. Oh, yeah. Let me look at the faces. Let me look at the faces of those women in here. Right. So, I can see that most of y'all in here, most of the women in here, probably give me some funny looks. Give me the side eye, some arms folded, some whatevers. <laughs> well, uncross your arms and <laughs> give me a second to explain. So when I say woman know thy place, what I'm referring to, I'm not referring to the limited or submissive position that they are suggesting that most women take. Instead, I'm talking about the vital role that strong, faithful women of God play in his divine plan. All right. Okay, All right. hear me out. <laughs> okay, I see I got your attention. <laughs> I'm using Esther as my example of the strength of a God-fearing woman and what a God-fearing woman can accomplish. Mm. So in the book of Esther, we see a woman who, despite the odds and the dangers that surrounded her, summoned up the courage to approach the king on behalf of her people. Yes. Esther's unwavering faith and trust in God gave her <coughs> the strength to risk her life for the greater good. All right. 
right. let this serve as a reminder to all of us to recognize our own unique callings in life. So, for those of you who do not know the story of Esther, she was a Jewish orphan who became the queen of Persia by winning a beauty contest. Amen. But being a queen was more than just wearing a crown, looking pretty, wearing Amen. fancy clothes. Esther knew that deep down that this wasn't a coincidence. Mm. She believed she was put there for a reason, a All bigger right. purpose than herself. Now, have you ever done something that you know you weren't going to gain anything from doing it? Mama. Even though it may seem like it to other people, well, you knew that God put you in that place at that time oh, yes. for a specific reason and purpose. Oh, All right, now. Yeah. All right, so I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but back up. All right. <laughs> so back to the story of Esther. Mordecai, and I hope I'm saying that correctly, Mordecai mm -hmm. was right. also a Jew who was the cousin and guardian of Esther. Mm -hmm. He was also a man of God. So let me stop there for a minute and ask a question. Now, how many of you have that person who keeps encouraging you in the Lord? You don't have to answer. I just want you to think about it. That person mm -hmm. that's constantly pushing you forward in the Lord, okay? So Mordecai's guidance and support were instrumental in shaping Esther's destiny. He was her God. He was the one that was pushing her in the, and encouraging her in the Lord. So yeah. Mordecai's wisdom and deep faith in God showed in his counsel to Esther. Mordecai was the one who sent word to Esther in verse 14 mm -hmm. that I read in your hearing. The, mm -hmm. It states, for if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then there shall then shall there enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. All right. But thy father's house shall be destroyed, and who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Yes. Whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. So he's mm. asking her if this might be your place and time. This might be your purpose. This is what he's telling her. So this statement captures Mordecai's profound understanding of God's providence and the belief that Esther had a significant role to play in the deliverance of her people. Amen. So sometimes when you're unsure about your inside voice, well, God yeah. will send an outside oh, voice so, so, so. of confirmation. Thank you. So I now... I here's a little story. I attended services at Mount Moriah and the Zion Church on Saturday Sunday. So me and Sierra, we play and we sing on their youth Sunday. Well, they had a layperson service and Sister Kimberly Leary spoke, which I was hoping that she was going to be here today, but I understand. Her message was titled, Say Yes to the Lord. While she was speaking, all I could do was smile because I was like, that's directly related, related to what I'm about to talk about today. Mm. So she said... You have to know the voice of God well. and ask him for understanding if you don't know. Right. She says sometimes you even have to stop and ask God, is this where I'm meant to be? So you don't always know, but you can ask and listen for that inside voice. Oh yes. And she even says sometimes to ask that she had to ask him, are you sure? <laughs> to make sure that she heard him correctly. <laughs> and that she was moving in spirit and not in the flesh. Right. Amen. She said, when you move in the flesh, mm -hmm. you get ahead of yourself mm -hmm. and things don't work out. Things right. usually don't go according to plan. But when you act in the spirit yes. and follow the will of God, it will definitely work out. It may yeah. not turn out the way you yeah. think it Come should, right, but right. it's going to work out in your favor. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. She talked about how she ministered to other women on the job. And then she said that God meant for her to be in that place at that time so she could serve her purpose. Right. She said before she spoke on that Sunday, she heard something similar on Friday at their revival where the guest pastor's message was just say yes. Mm. <laughs> well, Sister Kimberly served a purpose for me on that Sunday as my outside confirmation that this message was meant to be delivered today. Because I was like, am I am I on the right track? Am I going yes. where you want me to go? So I want y'all to bear with me, okay? So God's message is spreading that it is time for us to stop playing and follow our calling and walk in our purpose according to his will, yeah, moving right in now. spirit and not in the flesh, okay? So I hope that y'all hear me. I hope that didn't go over your head, all right? All right, all right so back to Esther real quick. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mordecai delivered 
oh, discovered a plot to assassinate the king and reported it, saving the king's life. However, the king's highest official is it pronounced Haman? Is that how it's pronounced? H A M A N? Huh? That's right. Haman. Okay. Because I was saying it like that and I was like, I, is that correct? But I I'm figured sure. somebody here would correct me. There's <coughs> outside voices. All right. So, Haman. <laughs> <laughs> However, um, the king's highest official, Haman, grew increasingly powerful and demanded that everybody bow down to him. Well, Mordecai, refusing to bow down to anyone but God, angered Haman. Haman mm. devised a wicked plan to annihilate all the Jews in Persia. All when right Mordecai, Mordecai learned of this plot, he urged Esther to approach the king and intercede for her people, even though it could cost her her life. So in Esther chapter 4, verse 11... Esther sent word to Mordecai stating, mm -hmm. all the king's servants and people of the king's <clears throat> providence know that any man or woman goes to the king inside the inner court without being called there is but one law to be put to death. All right. Mm -hmm. Now imagine the guts it took for her to approach the king without being summoned. Mm -hmm. It was a life or death situation, but... Esther right. did not let fear control her. Mm -hmm. right. She prayed, she fasted, and she acted. Yes. Why? Because she believed that she was there for such a time as this. That was right. her purpose. Yeah. Because she, because Esther stepped out on faith, not knowing what God's plan was for her, but knowing what her place was in God's plan. All right. Okay? Yeah. Esther's story isn't just about her. It's about all of us. Just like yeah. Esther Every single one of us has a purpose, a role in God's plan, your yes. job, your family, your friends. It's all a part of something much bigger. Okay, I'm getting to my point. Bear with me. When Esther embraced her purpose, she changed the course of history. Fear didn't stop her. Her faith fueled her bravery. She showed us that faith isn't just a passive belief. It's a force that moves us into action. Mm. Esther sent word to Mordecai in verse 16 saying, go gather together all the Jews that are present in, how do you pronounce that, Shashan, mm -hmm. and fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink the three days nor nights or day. Mm -hmm. I also and my maidens will fast likewise, and so will I go unto the king, which is not according to the law, and if I perish... I perish. Man. That's what she said. She said, if it is meant for me to die, delivering this message, then that's what's going to happen. All right, now. This is a perfect example of trusting and believing in God, even when things seem scary, knowing your place in God's plan. So now I'm not just talking about Esther. I'm talking about everybody in here. How many of you have been lied on? You've been cheated. Mm, You've been life. talked about. You've been mistreated. You don't have to raise your hand because I oh. already know. I'm oh. one of them. Right How now. many times have you felt like things are just going Talk to be to right. You right. felt like giving up. All you right. had to hard, take the hard road. and was like mm. enough is enough. Mm. Your body's always tired. <coughs> You're full of pain. You lost all, a lot of loved ones. But ain't no need for us to complain. My we mind. pull, you get pulled in many directions. You're abused. The nagging mm -hmm. voice in the back of your head is mm -hmm. keeping you confused. Mm -hmm. And then how many nights have you spent on your knees crying? I know, I've been there. Mm -hmm. All yeah. of us have been there. The strength of a God-fearing woman is like no other. It is rooted deep in her faith, Thank her God. honor in God's eyes, and her unwavering commitment to follow his will. Mm -hmm. Sisters in Christ, your place and God's divine plan is calling to serve, to lead, to shine his light in this world. It is a calling to use your unique gifts, talents, and passions to further his kingdom. Just as Esther allowed, followed callings with faith and dedication, you too can, so can each of you. Woman, know thy place is a calling to embrace your unique role in God's plan with confidence and purpose. It is a call to recognize your place is not one of limitation, but of <coughs> empowerment. Your place in faith, love, and service in God's divine plan. In the unwavering strength of a woman's faith, we witness the undeniable power of devotion, resilience, and unwavering trust in God, our creator. All right. 
It is a testament to the profound impact women have in shaping not only our own destiny, but also the world around us. Mm -hmm. So let us celebrate this extraordinary faith mm -hmm. and strength of our sisters, mm -hmm. mothers, daughters, and friends. For it is a beacon of hope, a source of inspiration, mm -hmm. and a direct reflection of the divine light that shines within us, not just on Sunday, not just on Women's Day, mm -hmm. but every day. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, my, my, my.